Scott of the Antarctic is a legendary story about the British explorer who, with four others, walked to the South Pole but died on the way back. One of his team, Cecil Henry Mears, who has a distinct Victoria connection, walked the first part of the trip, and so does his polar leader, Robert Scott. Bruce Kirkpatrick reports. As a boy, Cecil Henry Mears always wanted to be an adventurer. He was part of Robert Scott's Antarctic expedition in 1911-1912. He was Scott's chief dog handler. Records of Scott's Terra Nova expedition are at the Royal BC Museum, including a photo journal Mears kept showing dogs he got in Siberia. He was in charge of the expedition ponies, too. It was a rough beginning. On the way to Antarctica, his dog Osman was swept overboard. A second wave then swept the dog back on board. Cecil Mears has his own Antarctic pennant, but there was friction. He and Scott had an uncomfortable relationship because Scott wasn't all that confident of the ability of the dogs in Antarctica. And I think Mears in the end uh, actually packed up and left in a huff because Mears left before the end of the official, the official end of the expedition. Scott himself visited Victoria long before his ill-fated walk to the pole. He danced with Kathleen O'Reilly at Point Ellis House. His signature is on her dance cards. O'Reilly and Scott canoed down the gorge. Uh, they also attended social events. He was a young naval lieutenant when he was posted here uh, early in his career in 1889. So there's a connection between the naval base at Esquimalt and the future polar explorer. Robert Falcon Scott had tried to walk to the South Pole in 1901. That discovery expedition failed. During that time, he and O'Reilly wrote one another. He kept her informed about his plans for the pole. Scott tried for the pole again in 1911-1912. He made it this time, only to discover Norwegian Roland Amundsen had been there a month before him. Bitterly disappointed, Scott and four others starved and froze to death on their way back. Cecil Mears was not on the final pole push party of five. Expedition representative Dmitry Girov wrote Mears advising him of Scott's death. And later in life, Cecil Mears retired in Victoria. He lived a very quiet life here. We can't even actually tell for sure when he first arrived. Sometime in the 1930s, um, we believe that he may have ended up living in a house on St. Patrick Street, number 1360. Cecil Mears married Ann Spengler in 1915. They later moved to Victoria, and Cecil Henry Mears died in Victoria May 12, 1937, 76 years ago this week in history. This Week in History, brought to you by the Royal BC Museum, bringing British Columbia stories together.